Okay, alright. So, it's very simple. So, your muscle fibers are made of myofibrils. The myofibrils are made up of tractile subunits. I'll just show you how a contractile subunit works. So, here and here, these are, um... I forget what they're called. No, I unplugged your Ethernet, but your computer defaulted to fucking Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> Dumbass. That's baller as Wait. fuck. <laughs> so this is these form the boundary of our Z disc. So this is our Z disc. This is the maximum length that the muscle fiber will get to. It is held in place that way by a couple of um, elastin fibers. Um. All right, so we then have the work whoever's taking it seriously. <laughs> it's Matt. It's Matt. Good, good. It's oh, Matt. No. <laughs> we That's then good. have two interacting filaments. You know what? You're right. I should take notes. But this looks like an there. abacus. Where are your <laughs> Mitchell? I was asked to explain. I'm. I'm just. Explaining, okay. Yeah, Mitchell, get out of here. Okay. Yeah, I want to. I want to hear this. All right, can you start from the beginning again? I wasn't we taking. Should, we, we should. We should get Oni in here too. This is what he wants to do, right? All right. <laughs> he's got to. So, he's got. He's got to know how muscles work. We have these red ones are troponin, which is the kind of anchor point along an actin cytoskeleton. Together, they're called tropomyosin, and then this. In the middle, these are myosin, right? So, the interesting thing is that on the ends of these myosin thing, there's two little, or, well, many little heads, right? So, a good way to imagine it is along the uh, tropomyosin fibers, it's basically like um, a bunch of gears, like tiny teeth for a gear. And each step, these uh, one of these myosin heads will literally go, swing forward, latch onto a gear, and then it will pull the entire myosin fiber forward. And that's done through like four or five um, non-covalent interaction steps, uh, mediated by the presence of ATP and calcium. Um, I have a question. So, yeah. If they move fast enough, will it be like a chainsaw and totally rip up the red part? Yes. Oh, that's huge! <laughs> that is very, very much a thing. These, you know, like when people, you know, like they rend muscle from bone type shit? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, if you dump enough calcium and ATP into this subunit, um, yeah, you will just um, absolutely shred your topomyosin. And then the myosin is just kind of hanging out like, the fuck do I do now? Huh. Nice. So you gotta be careful. Anyway, so one of these heads swings forward, it grabs, then <coughs> another head further down, say this one, releases, it goes up, and then it then swings around, it grabs here, and it keeps pulling forward. So if you then figure that there are these heads on both sides, they can go, grab, and they basically squeeze the two green sides here in towards the center. I have a question. Yeah? Why are some of the heads dots, but the other heads are lines? Fuck you. Are they different? No. Step outside the okay. class. It's a different brush size, Matt. Go to the principal's office. You're going to fail <laughs> the semester of bioinformatics. I was just wondering, I'm sorry. Yeah, don't wonder on these parts. Unless you're right, like me. But I'm awesome, so understandable, really. <laughs> okay. So, let me find a good diagram of the power stroke cycle. Here we go. Fuck, that didn't work well. All right, so here, this is our myosin head. This is the active site where it w is going to bind right here. You can see we have ADP and phosphorus, uh, phosphate here, right? So what happens is calcium comes in, 
it binds to this troponin site, um, and when that happens, it introduces a conformational chain, slightly opening up this fiber. The myosin head can come in, which you see here, it binds to the troponin, um, and then this ADP just oh and the P no just the ADP <laughs> dissociates from the myosin head and then that induces a conformational change in the myosin tail um, which then causes it to contract as you can see here it curls upwards and pulls the entire fibril but if this is happening on both sides you have to remember that this represents the outside being pulled in that would be to the left in this case or you know this to the right depending on your frame of reference then this releases from the sarcomere after that um in response to fox sodium i think i forget um i i doesn't matter no uh, that's from the phosphorus leaving anyway then it goes relaxes to this state an atp comes along binds itself um the dephosphorylation reaction um powers this to come and connect to another sarcomere after that has been uh had its fucking con or excuse me trip connect to another troponin after its calcium induced shape change and all that happy horseshit so you duplicate that out a bunch and that's how a muscle goes from relaxed to contracted and then contracted to relax is just the opposite. So there you have it. Is this going to be on the test? Yes. <laughs> Can we do a presentation night where you guys uh, talk about all the fun things you're learning in college? No.